sharpest minds in the beauty industry to come together from around the world to share their brilliance, knowledge, and know-how to help you grow personally and professionally. These are the industry disruptors, the trendsetters, the leaders that think differently and change the standards forever. This is Lessons with Legends with your host, Jason Everett. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Jason Everett from HighPerformanceSalon.com. And, uh, you know, sometimes when you do things, it doesn't work out the way you want. And so if you guys have been watching version of the show, we're back on again. We got, dick, we got dumped out, and now we're back in play. So, you guys, thank you so much for playing along and joining us. I am pumped to have you guys on today's recording uh, or, or this video and on with us live. Uh, what's up, Mark? Good to see you, man. I can actually see comments now. That's kind of cool. So anyway, um, as we go through today, you know, I want to do this show because I met some people and I met these guys, uh, you know, circa almost eight, ten years ago. But I recently got a chance to hang out with a few of them uh, when we were at this event called Symposium Development, which is where we're getting ready for a big event called SDS, or it's the Symposium Development Sessions. And what I loved about these people that I'm bringing on today, Peter and Tess, is that a, they're a little crazy, like all of us, we're all a little crazy, and B, they've got a great sense of humor, and C, they just have this eye like nobody's business. So whether you're a salon owner, or you are, you are, have another business, but you want to figure out, how do I aesthetically plan out a business, specifically your salon though, to make it look like a million bucks, what do you have to do so you don't have to spend a million dollars in order to get there? These guys are the pros. Now, Peter has worked in the, over the last 30 years with some huge name brands. I'm going to let him drop for you later today. Um, but the, the whole thing is he's worked with these amazing people to create some of the coolest stuff out there. And now he works with salons to go in and do uh, an entire, you know, sometimes a gut remodel, sometimes a spruce up, all kinds of things. I'm going to let you see a couple of uh, video clips of some of the stuff that they've done. So check this out. And then I'm going to bring on Peter and Tess in just a second. All right, guys, hang tight. I've been a salon designer for 30 years. I'm principally known as a designer. I've designed for some of the greatest designers in the world. I just didn't feel like I could put something ordinary out there. Uh, the challenge was to do something that was the level of design that I do for people like Armani or Ralph Lauren and make it affordable to the clients that I work with. So please welcome to the show, Peter and Tess from Millar Design. Hey guys, it is so good to see you. Uh, looking amazing, clearly, as you as you only can. Yes? Yes, it's you too. Good Jason. to see you too, Tess. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it, it's it's we we've, we've done so many things, and sometimes, like I said, it just, you know, you try and figure out the best of the best. And and I just want to say, you guys, I was really impressed. You know, when I when I had the privilege of, of connecting with you guys in a little bit more detail and seeing how you guys work and what you do. And I was just blown away because your your eyes, the way you see things, the way you look at things, not only like visually, but mentally, how you view uh, design and just what people should do and the impressions, I just think is incredible. And, um, you know, I was saying when we were doing some stuff earlier is that I think, you know, you can walk into a business and it can make you feel like a million dollars and make you feel incredible. And you go, wow, I, I love this place. Or you can walk in and it can feel intimidating, like... I, I don't think I own, I don't think I have enough money in my wallet to be able to walk in this place. Or you can walk into a place and it feels like I'm in my grandma's basement and I absolutely hate it, right? And, and what I hope that people get out of this, especially if they're salon owners that are watching, is that the salon owners that are watching, I want them to know, like, what does my space feel like and how could Peter and Tess give me some ideas that would help me turn it into this amazing, warm space that would invite customers in and make them feel like they're the million dollars, not the salon is the million dollars. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So I, I'd love to do that as a part of that today. You guys, do me a favor. For those of you that are watching with us online, type in the chat where you are on the line from. I want you to write in your city, the country, wherever you guys are so they kind of know what's going on. I see a lot of you guys commenting already. And if you hear stuff that you like from Peter and Tess, do me a favor. Give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Give it a love. I want them to know that you're absolutely loving what they're talking about. So Peter and Tess, I always love starting with... What is your favorite vacation spot slash activity? What do you like to do? What is your favorite thing? And then we'll dive into this thing. But what, what is it for you, Peter? Uh, my favorite thing, I'm, I'm, gonna ch I'm being pushed by tents. <laughs> being pushed by, not hopefully into, into large not bodies of water? 
Not physically. Uh, sometimes <laughs> physically. She, um, Tess is the daughter that was out of control. She was the one who skied uh, double black in Austria, no less. Nice. Uh, which is really double black. <laughs> and um, at age 11, and she went off piste at that point, off terrain skiing. Mm -hmm. And you can't let an 11-year-old go alone. So at age 50, I had to go into the wild and ski through rocks and trees, and I was the only screaming person... Screaming the whole way. Screaming. Terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Uh, truly terrifying. I love it. I love it. Uh, hollering at her. She didn't care. She had on a helmet. She didn't hear me. Um, and she pushed me. And mm. I think that I had the most exhilarating, fantastic beautiful experiences, skiing in Colorado and Utah with Pesit Alta and Crested Butte, very challenging stuff. And so that's one kind of vacation. The other vacation that I, I recover from... I, by the way, you should know about Peter. I'm going to ask one question. He's going to answer 12. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best to rein you in, Peter, but this is what I love about you. Okay, so what was the other one? Sapphire Beach in St. Thomas. We have a condo. Come on. And, and okay. we just sit on the beach and we don't do anything. We just swim. Awesome. I love it. So how about for you, Tess? What, are, what is your favorite place to be, thing to do? What, what is it for you? So I grew up on the Upper East Side of Manhattan in New York City, yeah. and I love that. But then I wound up marrying a guy from Alaska, and oh. he introduced me to camping and to, most importantly, to kayaking. And so my favorite thing is every summer we'll do um, a 9 to 12 day kayak trip, just the two of us off the coast of Alaska, and it's wow. the thing in the world. Well, total that, will, total yeah. wilderness. I was going to say, that can go totally wrong. I, I definitely think that you know a girl from Manhattan probably, yeah. I think that's a movie, right? Like probably does yeah. not love going into the wilderness and taking off her heels to go uh, kayaking. So that's its own probably interview in and of itself, but... That's good to know that you've, you've been able to make the migration into camping. I mean, I'm, I'm in Northern California, so I love, interestingly enough, I love camping. I also love skiing. I love both those things. Uh, I've never got to go to Austria for skiing, but this is, that's incredible. So as we go through this stuff today, guys, and by the way, thanks for sharing some of that. Because I think, you know, one of the things that's great, and by the way, if you like learning things about people, do me a favor and say learning. But the thing that I love about, about being able to, you know, kind of have these interviews with, uh, with these legendary people, I mean, for crying out loud, Peter, you have done some incredible work. Tess, you've done some incredible work. You work with some of the, the, the biggest, coolest, who would be perceived as like coolest people on the planet, yourself included in that. But give me, give me the list. Like, give me the like, I know you don't like to talk about it, but like, give me, who have you worked with? and help do design work for? Like, can you give me some lists? Because we met through Redkin, that's one, but like, who else have you worked with over the years, 30 years of doing this? Well, uh, in, the, in the hair care industry, our main, we're mainly working with Redkin, Kerastas, Matrix, yeah. Shu, Mora, Mazzani, yeah. Yeah. L'Oreal Professional, yeah. and then outside of that world, um, he's worked for every beauty industry. She's worked for Ralph Lauren and, Te and Tom Ford, um, and I've worked for a lot of people, because I've got gray hair, but I worked with um, Chanel. Chanel was a huge client. Um, uh, with Chanel, I worked for Karl Lagerfeld, who is famous, I think, to many of you. <laughs> I, I, I worked with Yves Saint Laurent. I worked for um, Tiffany. Tiffany was a huge client. Uh, Paloma Picasso, Elsa Peretti. Um, they are not names you know. Ralph Lauren, Calvin Klein, Chloe, Chloe mm. uh, Donna Karen. Um, so just, I mean, you could probably go on, but like just a few for crying out loud, like some really big people, yes? Yes, huge. Yeah. Um, I, and I, I didn't, um, when I started working for Ralph Lauren, I was arguing to get a full counter, a full four foot counter. Mm -hmm. He was not known. He was just starting. And, um, he was the right horse to bet on, and mm -hmm. and I designed for him. And one thing that's pretty cool is Peter worked with um, with Ralph Lauren fragrances on the launch of their first fragrance, which nice. was Polar. Ralph Lauren Sol. Okay. Yeah. But then for Safari, which was their next big launch, 
they wanted to, they did an ad campaign that was letters from a woman on safari in Africa back to her love, you know, to someone who she loved or vice versa. Her husband was on safari. Yeah. And um, they wanted in the ads and magazines to show the letters in the background behind the bottle of safari. Yeah. And yeah. they got, had Peter write the letter because he has beautiful handwriting. Stop and it. When, Find the old ads. I I found some of the old print ads. How cool! It's his handwriting on the in the letter. They were looking. She was a woman who was an adventuress, and so she. um, They didn't want girlish writing with little curl cues. They wanted a woman who wrote boldly and beautifully. And so they. (laughs) So they. So they they used yours. They paid me two hundred dollars a word, and my wife. We were somewhere in North Carolina, and she was like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, "I'm writing the word wonderful or something." Yeah. And I had to write the words over and over and over again until they were just perfect, yes. and it was fun. Well, I, I loved think, had a lot of fun, Peter. That, that I think that's the exact idea. Is like to the point is like when you design. I mean, as a designer, you said you wrote it two hundred times until it was perfect. I mean, I, I definitely would say there's areas of my life that I'm obsessive like that, and there's areas of life that I wish I wish I was more obsessive uh, like that. And and I think it's interesting. So as we go through this today, you know, I know you guys have put together some, some lists for me, right? You got some really cool lists today uh, of of things. And so tell me about the list that you guys have, because I want to I drop it out there so people know what list we're talking about. You've got two of them, right? Yes. Yes. So what are the two? I do the don'ts list. Okay. So I'm you're going to do the don'ts because that is your entertainment value, for sure. I am the discipline person. <laughs> and Tess, you're going to do the do's? we got the do's the and don'ts. Do's. Yeah. She's cool. the positive I'm person. I'm the positive, positive reinforcement. I am okay. the black cloud. But so, the thing that... I think um, in terms of why we created these lists in the first place was because what you were talking about at the beginning was how you walk into a song and you feel like it's your grandmother's basement or it's a million dollars and you're going to be priced out or it feels just right. And I think what you're talking about is are two things. One is that it's a real, the guest experience is a very emotional one. Yeah. And the most important part of that emotional experience is making sure that the first impression is a professional one. Love it. And that we can talk until we're blue in the face about whether or not something's pretty or something isn't. And that's really just not personal style. Right. Yeah. And yeah. That's not what we want to talk <clears throat> about today. The thing that we've learned is design is essential to people's business and that when we renovate somebody's space or do a consultation, generally their business sales increase 17 to 23% afterwards. Just because of the look aesthetic changes. Well, ex- yes and no. Most of our uh, business is double. Yes. Most mm-hmm. of our business is double within two to six years. Our full renovation. And that's not us. That was L'Oreal tracking it. When we yeah. just do <clears throat> quick sort of tweaks to people's retail, that's where you get the 17 to 23% change. Right. Right. And I guess the only thing that, I guess you can call it the look of something, or you can say how it's technically executed and whether it's set up properly, right. which A, I don't think is the way something looks, it's the way something functions. Mm-hmm. And what we want to really do is make sure that people's salons are functioning properly, totally. and that will, then the, the side effect is it will look more beautiful. Totally. But the five do's and the five don'ts are really making sure that your salon is setting up in a way that's functioning so that you can give your guest a professional first impression and so that you can sell more products, sell more services, just function better. I the thing I'd like to <clears throat> is that they are hairdressers are artists and they are performing a craft. It's a highly, highly skilled craft. Hmm. And like any great actor or actress, and there is a theatricality to most hairdressers, you have to admit. Yeah. Um, and the reality, because they live life emotionally, and yeah. right, feeling as artists do, they need a stage, and the stage that's, that that you set them on enforces them, it elevates them, it, it sets them forward. And so if you, they walk into a place to get their hair cut that literally looks like somebody's house, uh, 
where is the conflict? You wouldn't go there right. to have your, your surgery done. And so I think Peter's identified five things that make people think a place is unprofessional. So, so let's let's talk about those because one of the things in my mind, like I, I had gone into a place that was a, uh, a salon for kids. I've got, you know, four-year-old and a one-year-old. And I walked into this kid's salon, and it was actually a beautiful salon. The first one I walked into had little toys, and it was just immaculate, and it was great. And then the next time we went in, they had a sign on the door that said, we've moved across the street. And they had moved across the street from this beautiful location to a house that they were in progress of renovating. Oh, okay. And I walked in the door, and it was like, all of a sudden it was dirty, and it was just like, the, there was, you know, you, you had to kind of park in the dirt, and you went up to the house, and the house wasn't finished, and I walked in, and I went, what happened to this incredible salon that I thought it was done very, very nicely as for kids, but they were kind of in transition. I walked in, I'm like, I'm never coming back here again because it was this beautiful place, but they were trying to be cheap, move across the street, and they never even finished in their invites. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I got to get to the nightmare stuff, Peter, and I know you want to get into it too. So tell me, what are the five things? What are the five things that make you want to get, gouge your eyes out when you see other people's salons? I know you got a good list here. So what are what are the top five? By the way, if you guys want, if you want a copy of the list, um, do me a favor and in the comment section below say, give me a copy. And after this, I will send you a link so you can actually download this list, the five things from Peter and the five things from Tess that you should be doing to make sure your salon is looks like a million bucks uh, and the five things to avoid, the do's and don'ts. So uh, do me a favor and say, list in the comment section. I'll send it to you. Peter, what are the five, my man? Give me, give me some of the good ones. Okay, the number one uh, calling card of an amateur is our houseplants. Houseplants? Plants. plants. They're called plants, and they are supposed to be where God put them, which is outdoors. In the dirt. And people insist on bringing them into their houses. And it's also called a house plant. No one has ever seen a business plant. Yeah, because yeah. Gonna, all right? Hmm. So the minute you start with your reception desk with plants on it, and I'm going to give you another shock, a bouquet of flowers, which is a yes. distraction. It's not what you do. And it's worth its expenditure. So no, I mean, so like, you know, a stylist gets flowers from their spouse or something. That's not, I mean, not so good either? No. All no. All well, so never. why though? Like flower, I'm going to be devil's advocate. Flowers never, are beautiful. They are never, <laughs> they are never fabulous flowers. They're cheap flowers mm. because they're on a budget and they're changing them every week and they don't really want to spend. If you're going to do flowers, yeah. you freaking yeah. do flowers. You spend. But you don't ever, when, when you walk into Saks, Nordstrom's, you don't see flowers. True. That's a great point. You're not going to see flowers all over the place. Ever. Spaces. Never. And the, the reason why we have the hard and fast rule about if your husband gives you a bouquet of flowers, you don't put them on your styling station. Because the reason why you do that is because you want, on some level, your guests to sit down and say, oh, those are very pretty flowers. And then you get to talk about yourself. It's you, and not, it's not about the guests. Well, that goes back to this <laughs> idea. Day, and it's, you've got the flowers and the flowers, and you right. leave them around for a couple days until they're wilting. The focus from start to finish needs to be on the guests. I love guests. that. So a million dollar experience for the guests, not for talking about, it's, it's not that bragging right of my husband got me flowers and I'm off. Okay, so I love it. Number one, number one for sure, is no house plants, no flowers. I love it. Okay, that's number one. What's number two? Clutter. Like just clutter. general clutter. Clutter is the death of professionalism. Mm. It should, you You don't, first of all, when you walk on an airplane, you look into the cockpit. You don't see house plants. If you did, you'd leave the plane. <laughs> the co -pilot, Christmas cards, there are no Christmas, Christmas cards, cards in the cockpit. Yeah. There's no balloons <clears throat> because it's the pilot's birthday. There's none of that stuff. True, they're there to do business. Exactly. Yeah, they're there to make it happen. Fly the we planes. know, we know that stylists use the same styling products over and over again. Yeah. So there should be no more than two to three styling products on the workstation. And if there are more that they use, they need the to be in a drawer, period. Yeah, and by the way, just side note, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to train it out frame here, because I would say you should have two or three that you specifically planned for that guest that's sitting in that chair. And again, that's the only thing that should be there, not like all your normal stuff, because it's to your point. So now, Peter, I have to ask, can I ask a selfish question? Yeah. Too cluttered back here? Yes. 
That's your business. I'm not going to go there. No, I, I honestly wanted to know, though. I was like, I because now that you're saying that, now I'm like, well, it's probably too cluttered. I got too many books back here. I got too much stuff going well, on. There, there, yeah. That's a, different. Uh, that is different because you are a teacher. Hmm. Okay. And so that might I might be able to get away with that one. That's, that's an environment that is it looks like what teach. If you go into a doctor's office, you go mm-hmm. into a teacher's office, they have a lot of crap on the walls. Okay. <laughs> so that's. They're not in the beauty business. The the point is. But I, I would one thing is one I mean, thing that you're not doing. You ha- I don't know nothing behind you is identifiable other than the quote. I don't know if that's an axe on the wall or what's going on. Yeah. But the thing is, is that that's that would sort of fall into the area of artwork, which we also are not huge fans of artwork that doesn't reflect back to what the reason is for a hair salon, which is beauty. But the biggest issue that we see in terms of clutter is that people bring in Christmas cards, personal photos, those sorts of things. And salons are supposed to be focused on the guest and on what the guest experience is. Yeah, it it is a great point. And it's also supposed to be an escape. And we know that 50%, what is it, 40%, 50% of all marriages end in divorce. Lots of women are waiting into, to get pregnant until later, and I know I have tons of friends who are having issues with getting pregnant. Yeah, yeah. Some people who have decided not to have kids. There are some people who are getting pressured by their mother-in-law so to get pregnant. So to the point, it's just it's, it's getting distracting thoughts. People right? just want to get away, and so they come in, and when they're looking at baby pictures, at wedding photos, you're not giving mm-hmm. them the escape. You, for all you know, your it. guest has just gone through a divorce, you, and then they're looking at your wedding When photos. you put a wedding photo on your workstation, Every other person who sits in the chair, it ended in a divorce. It, so why would you take 50% of your, you wouldn't put a, 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 a Democrat or a Republican thing right. in your Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You shouldn't, if in case some, anybody is. For that person that has uh, Make America Great Again ball caps <laughs> Don't do on that their either. Okay. Yeah, so, but I think here's a really important thing, and, and by the way, yeah. I was going to say, so here's the really interesting thing. What I love about what you said, because, you know, I'm kind of selfishly like now, you know, abusing your knowledge for my background, is like, so the, the axe on my shoulder here is a Fijian skull crusher. It's from when I, when I went on a trip to Fiji. But to your point, here's the problem with that, is that that's something that I want to talk about that I've done. Yeah, so yeah. you want me to say, what's that cool what's the axe thing? on the wall? And they're like, actually. Actually, it was when I was, I mean, see, I mean, yeah. I'm calling myself out on that. I mean, I thought, you know, I had a good justification for like, well, it's to remind me sometimes you got to crush some skulls to do something. But to your point is it's no, no longer about, it's no longer about the client experience. It's really about, the, well, I have to change my office. But but I love that you guys think about it this way because the, the larger thought here is, how do you create an experience that's really not for the person who's giving it, it's for the person who's getting it? I love that. Yes. Everything behind you, everything that's surrounding you right now, mm-hmm. as I'm looking at you, is a perfect example of what happens. It's all submis- subliminal messages. Yeah, and this is happening. What, what, what more extraordinary subliminal message can you send Right. Than when you right. hang a Maori skull crusher on the wall behind it. Yeah. <laughs> so I love. I love it. No, I, I didn't mean to make this about me. I'll have to pay for a separate consultation. I have no doubt in my mind now. Uh, but so I want to keep you moving because I, I now have gotten off track too. But I want to take you point three. Can yes. I get you to three? What is the th- and by the way, if you guys want this complete list, because we're going to s- spill over and give you all this, I want to make sure you get it. If you want the list, comment list. But Peter, what are some other super important things? And if you want to like go back and add one more thing, feel free. All right, go back to clutter. If we go back to clutter, let me give quick examples. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. candy dishes with cheap candy in them. Oh, right? like out on the counter. Okay, candy Real dishes batch. On the reception counter, desk. on the reception desk. Holiday decorations. Huh. We've gone into mm. we've gone into salons and there have been bales of hail and scarecrows. Between, bales of hay. Bales and, of hay. Yeah, bales of hay. And scarecrows. And we asked, why are there bales of hail and a scarecrow in front of your retail? And she said, because Thanksgiving's coming up. And it's pumpkins. Yeah. Pumpkins. You're in the beauty business. No, really? Is there so? Is there is there a way yeah. Yeah. to acknowledge yeah. holidays without putting pumpkins yeah. and ghosts? First of all, where does they are in the fashion industry? Mm-hmm. 
They are representatives of fashion, of style. So if it isn't talking about beauty and fashion, it has no business in their business. Or there can be a sign that says that there's a special promotion for... ABCD. ABCD. But, yes. not, but not a decked out Halloween it's spirit just, store takeover of the salon. No. no ribbons, no bows, no puppies, no bunnies, no babies. Okay. So, okay, so here's what I want to say for everybody that's watching this. You're either watching this and getting really pissed off. Like, yeah. damn it, I love my holidays. But here's, here's what I want you to pay attention to. And this is what I love about Peter and Tess is that they are really focused on one objective, which is the guest having an amazing experience. And again, as I've mentioned my own personal Fijian skull crush over here, that's about me. It's not about them. And I think that's the idea we're talking about even here with holidays. Is how do you make it all about the guests? So, and, I think, and I think also the, th the reason why we're very emphatic about holidays is that 99% of the time it's done in a very childish way. It brings out people's inner child. Mm -hmm. And it's done very cheaply because you know you're about to throw it away. So mm -hmm. if you do something where you make an investment in it and you get something very upscale and elegant that is reflective of your brand, mm -hmm. then absolutely. Because I'm not going to say Christmas can't exist for you. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. I got you. So, but to your point. If you have a beautiful menorah that you bring out every single year and you put some money in, absolutely find a spot for that in your Just salon. Just not the disposable but holiday. But the disposable construction paper happy, garbage. Happy hands at home. It's yeah, hard. or the, you know, the stuff that you're going to throw away when it's after yeah. Valentine's Day, then don't even don't bring it in the floor. If you're going to throw it away in a week. I love it. Okay, so we've got, all right, so so number one was no house plants. Number two is no clutter, yes? Yes, yes. number three. Number three. Number three. Yeah. <laughs> Fluorescent lights. Oh, okay. So there's no fluorescent. Why is that? Uh, it destroys the color of the hair that you're working on that people are paying hundreds of dollars to get. Mm, so it'll make the hair look bad, and so even though it, it might be a great color. Uh, no, 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 no. It doesn't make it look bad. It makes you look like you don't know what the hell you're doing. I love they're it. Sitting there, they've asked for blonde hair, and they've got blue light above them. And their hair looks green. And their hair looks green because if you mix yellow with blue, you get green. Got so it. So hair looks brassy, it looks cheap. And how so mm -hmm. many of the people who are watching today know that they think their their light is okay. They don't want to spend money to put new lighting in, but almost all of them are bringing their guests from their chair to the front of the salon in order to see the color in daylight. When yeah, like, done. here, come over here, as opposed to showing them in the chair, yeah. Exactly. And they, the guest at that point has already decided that whether they like the color or not. Yeah, before you walk in front and say, no, this is what it'll really look like, even though you just <laughs> stared at it for the last hour long. Yeah. Okay, so no fluorescent lights. It can be done, and it is not, it's an investment, but it can be done for $31 a chair, or sixty dollars a chair. I love That's it, one haircut, for God's sake. Yeah, like get get it together. Okay, so uh, house plants, uh, clutter, no fluorescent light. What's number four? Wait, and I want to say one thing. Go ahead, go ahead. I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was coming. Ruth Roach. Yeah, Ruth. We had Ruth on. Okay, and have you had Chris Sorby? Yeah. Okay. Both of them said exactly the same thing. How can you do your good work if you can't see what you're doing? And you cannot see what you're doing unless the light is good quality light that is showing beautiful hair color correctly. Yeah. So there's nothing more important to your business than showing your work executed properly and looking beautiful. Yeah, it's well called said. hair color. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting a little passionate that you need to do this. By the way, if you love Peter's passion, do me a favor and say love passion in the comment section. Put a heart in there. Let, I want Peter to know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you as they come in. Give him some hearts to say love passion in here because I want to know uh, no matter where you're on from. Okay, I just so, told him where we're at in terms of time. I'm so sure. okay, number yeah. four. We're going to get to five and we're going to take a break. So number four. What is number four, Peter? Ugly wall colors. Oh, what's ugly? Give me some ugly wall colors. Anything but white. And No. It's anything that makes you look ugly. And the way that you know about that is you, 
think of it as all buttercups colors. Buttercups under your chin. Yeah, when you're little, you put buttercups under your chin to see if your skin turns yellow. Do you know that trick? No, not at all, but okay. All right, that's good well, to know. So it's essentially what it is. It's kind of a girly thing. Yeah, that's a little girly for me, but thanks for bringing it out. And by the way, everybody say Mary Watson says love, passion. Bobby, what's up, Bobby? She said love, passion. Gia, Bonnie said love. They're all loving you guys, so keep going. Great. So essentially what it is, is understand that whatever color you paint on the walls is going to be reflected onto people's skin. Like meaning literally so reflected as in like bounced and then hits your skin. Exactly. Paint, paint the wall blue, your client looks dead. Paint the, paint the yellow, wall yellow, the client, client looks like they have jaundice or liver failure. Yeah. Okay. So the worst that you can do are blue, green, yellow. Mm. The worst because that makes people look sick. Yeah, Orange, is white, is, white is the best. And we use Benjamin Moore, OC, like Orange County, OC 118. Go home, write that down. It's called Snowfall it's White. It's called Snowfall White, and it makes everything in every Ralph Lauren store look magnificently. Oh, see, and you guys are getting Ralph Lauren hot tips here. I love it. I'm and wrong. also... Yeah. In the bathroom, it's good to paint the walls pink, a warmer pink. color, like a pink or a peach or an ivory, a, a pinky ivory color. Nice. It's called those Benjamin nice. Moore Opal is one of our favorites. I love it. And sure. that's because you want women to look like rosy cheeks like and they just tan, came back like they just from came back from a beach yeah. mm. when they go into the bathroom because you want them, when they're alone, checking their hair color. Yeah. With I love it. You guys. <laughs> These tips are so money. I, I'm just saying, like, this is good. Blue look like they just got back from Palm Beach. Which yeah. Has never happened. I love nice. it. I love it. This is so good, you guys. Okay. Well, tip I'll number five, and then we got to take a break. What is tip five? Tip five is stop building reception desks that are bunkers. Bunkers. <laughs> okay. They're not there to fight Nazis. Yeah. I, uh, to up, stand up and greet people like they're not. Axe murderers with Mayori skull crushers. We started this whole conversation. <laughs> I love it. See, I knew the skull crushers coming back. Yep. We started the entire conversation with talking about how you felt when you walk into a salon and how you want your guests to feel. Yeah. And the most important thing is you want them to feel welcomed. Totally. And building a literal barricade between the reception yeah, and a big block and of, yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's it's not a welcoming experience. It's like, that. Right. Down in the it's like over the fence and home improvement, Mr. Will. It's like this whole barricade, right? So uh, exactly. So uh, it should I mean should the counter just be lower, be more modular? I mean I'm sure you're gonna get into dues, but standing up be like and a possibly stuff. resting on a stool. They should be meeting you eye to eye as equals. It should be like when you walk into a good restaurant and a there's a restaurant they're not station. sitting there behind a uh, behind a desk. Yeah, they, no, not because I think a lot of people think it's that big beautiful counter that gets attention. But to your point, it, like it's no. a bunker. Like you're gonna come out and, no. and attack the they're, guest on the other side. And they're thinking of Sheraton hotels. They're not thinking. You know, where you walk in and there's this 40-foot-long reception desk. That's not what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're walking into a hair salon. It's supposed to be a personal experience. And when you walk into an expensive restaurant, someone is standing greeting you. Yeah. They're not sitting. Yeah. And they're certainly not. You know when you're in a, in a, in a deli kind of place, the, 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 what they're sitting Making behind. Making sandwiches you know, back there. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. If you're, and if you're <laughs> not sure if you have a bunker or not, just stand and watch your receptionist without them knowing it for a little while and look and see if the guests, when they walk in, walk up to the desk and say, excuse me. Because if the uh, guest is, is a, or I'm sorry, if the guest's first interaction is one where they're apologizing or saying excuse me, it means that the first experience is a, a negative. negative one. So good. And is it needs to be an immediate conversation and a personal I love it, you guys. So if they come in and say, excuse me, or I'm sorry, like they're interrupting this, the wrong experience. You guys, this has been super good. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're hanging out with Peter and Tess Millard some from Millard Designs. Uh, their website is up on the screen if you guys want to get a chance to check them out. Stick around. We're going back in just under a minute with more from Peter and Tess on the nine things that you should be doing inside your salon. The tips have been incredible, you guys, already. Super, yeah, but we are super 10 minutes good. left. What's that? You only have 10 minutes left. I know. We got do? this. Don't you worry, buddy. We're going to make it happen. All right, guys. We'll be back in just under a minute. Here we go. Being a salon owner can often be one of the most thankless jobs to have. 
And even worse, sometimes you sacrifice your own income to help others succeed only to have them leave. What if it didn't have to be that way? What if you could truly create the salon you've always dreamt of with a dedicated staff of professionals in a drama-free environment able to truly impact each other's lives and every guest who sits in your chair? The problem is the old business model hasn't evolved, resulting in the explosion of booth and suite rental salons. What if we revolutionized the model so booth renters would actually die to work inside commission salons on a team where everyone makes more income? feels valued as a person and is supported to create their best possible future. Are you ready to join the revolution? Hey guys, welcome back and uh, so good to have you guys. Peter and Tess Millard kicking it with us today and uh, I just, we just ran that commercial which reminded me um, we are doing an event coming up in Scottsdale, Arizona on October 29th if you're watching this before that event um, and I want to give away a ticket during this broadcast, the end of this broadcast um, we'll be drawing a winner for this broadcast that can actually win a ticket for our event, uh, valued at $197 for a VIP ticket. So if you want to enter to win for a ticket, do me a favor and comment in the comment section below and just say win, and we'll pull one of you to be able to actually win one of our tickets for our upcoming Salon Owner Evolution Revolution event. So do me a favor and comment below, and uh, we'll, we'll get one of you guys hooked up with a ticket. So Peter and Tess, we were talking about the five things. So I'm going to recap real quick and then we're going to switch over to the do's. Okay. So the five things you should not do inside the salon, no house plants, uh -uh, don't do it. Number two, no clutter. Number three, no fluorescent lighting. We want them to look incredible. Number four, no ugly wall colors. We don't want them to look like they're dying. That's a good point. And then number five, no bunkers, which you elaborate on. Tess, I know Peter left you the longest section talk about yours. <laughs> so you got to give me what, what are some of the, what are some of the do's absolutely here? about being able to uh, set up your salon for success so it looks incredible? Well, I think the most important thing is we talked at the beginning about that this isn't just about the way it looks, but about the way it functions. And so the way to have your retail functioning properly is to make sure that when guests enter into the space, they're encountering sort of a, a retail store before they even get to the reception desk. Mm, so well, retail prior to reception. Exactly. Okay. So because like we, like Peter was talking about with the bunkers, what we see most of the time is the door opens and then two feet away is this huge bunker. And what they should be experiencing is the desk should be pulled back maybe 20 feet away from the door. As long as it's within eyesight, people are going to be able to, they're going to start moving towards it. Because as yeah. soon as they walk in the door, that's what they're looking for. But what you want to do is have them pass by retail shelves as they're approaching the desk. And you want the waiting area to be um, sit seating in between the door and the reception area where they're sitting and looking at retail. And do not have a single magazine in the waiting area. Because <laughs> what you're supposed to be doing is selling retail, not yeah. telling them about the latest news about Meghan and Prince Harry. If they complain, get fashion books. Or move all of the magazines back into the processing area and to the styling area, which is but fun. Even then, even then to that point, I mean, why, like, I think the thing that I'm loving about how you guys are explaining all this is just what's the focus? You know, is your well, focus take their attention off of yeah, things, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's yes, like... And when you walk they don't into, give you magazines at Saks. They yeah, don't give yeah. you magazines at Sephora. Sephora understands that looking at beauty products is fun. How many times have you walked into a Sephora, or I have, to kill time because you got some got to a neighborhood early, and so you just want to kill some time and you go into Sephora to play. To and play. that's what you want to be creating, is a fun retail area where people are playing and interacting before they get to the reception desk. And that brings me to do number two. Look at which, you. You just ripped through all these points. Tess is on it. Tess is already on to point two. Go for it, Tess. What's two? Number two is that you, your shelves and your retail area needs to communicate with the guest. Because yeah, say more about that. the ideal scenario in terms of a retail experience is one where as I'm getting my hair done, my stylist is telling me which three products I need to buy in order to make my hair look exactly the way it was mm -hmm. that day. Or they just tell me about it and don't try to sell it to me because odds are if I know what they're doing and I like my hair, I will buy it. So that's the ideal shopping scenario. But with a retail store before you get to reception and with very busy stylists and colorists, that's not always possible. 
And so what you want to do is set up your retail shelf so that there's always a shelf talker to the left of each line of product mm. that's explaining what the names of the products are, what the benefits are, and the most important thing is that every pr product that you have on your shelf needs to have a price on a list next to it. Not on the bottle. Not right? not a sticker on the bottle. It should have a price list. That, so tell me about that. What's what, Why is that such a big deal? Because it will shoot your retail sales through the roof if people know what something costs. Because everybody is on different budgets. Mm -hmm. But even at the highest end, people are on budgets. And they like to know what something costs. And when you go into a, when, when you go into a store, people are, every single piece of clothing in a designer boutique has a price tag on it so that you can feel safe picking it up and taking it into the dressing room and falling in love with it. Mm -hmm. If it's something that's out of your price range, you won't even bring it into the dressing room. because you. And so it puts your customer into a position where they will have to guess at what something's going to cost. And what that means is that they're probably just going to grab one product instead of grabbing four. Because they don't know, is this a $10 item or is this a $30 item? Are they going to be embarrassed at the register? Yeah, they go to ring it up and they're like, oh, that was $35. I thought it was two. I'm good. Exactly. And yeah. that puts them in a position where they're either spending more than they wanted mm -hmm. to and feeling bad or having, having to be embarrassed and say, actually, I don't want to spend that much money. Can you please take it off? And that's embarrassing. So neither of those is a good shopping experience for the guest. Yeah. It's like you go into a restaurant. Prices the are prices on the right hand side. Period. Yeah, they're right there. It's super the clear. Country, there are no prices, and, and I get aggravated. Yeah. yeah. It's scared. Yeah, I, I had the worst experience ever. By the way, I was up. I have to tell the story because it's out of control. Uh, I was in I was in a restaurant in uh, in Vegas, and they sold me the like appetizer platter. They were like, "Oh, do you want today's appetizer platter?" And I was like, "Sure, sure, that's fine." I was buying dinner for the table. Come to find out, the appetizer platter cost more than the rest of the meal combined, and they didn't tell me it was oh. a two hundred fifty dollar appetizer platter. Are you kidding me? And uh, it was one of those things where it was just like, a, you know, well, like, was I going to say, oh, sorry, like, who didn't tell me? But it was just that it was the shadiest thing I'd ever seen. And, and you don't want that bad experience. experience into a negative one. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was horrible. So, and I think a lot of people worry that it's going to look low class if they put price tags on, and it doesn't. It's, it's not, not, not price tags on the bottle, price on the side, right, right on the shelf. <laughs> put it on the list, you only write it once. If you put it on 100 products, you have to write it yeah. 100 times. Yeah, I love okay? it. I love and it. every single product is taken, then you have to put the price on the next product. New products. Makes sense. And now, there are states that legislate that it has to be on every bottle. Go yeah, ahead. Good, good call. So follow your local laws, clearly, but ideally, that's how we operate. We don't want you to be lawbreakers. <laughs> and so then, um, in terms of what the actual salon space um, is communicating to the guests, you want, like we discussed, you want there to be a personal style and for there to be high impact, but we really would love it, um, and we find that it's much more successful if that style is communicated through big beauty images, because that is expressing to your guest your sense of style, it's reminding them why they're there, and it's just setting a tone for the entire space. And that's something where we generally th believe in sort of classic design of black and white or some wood accents, but keeping the design of a space uncluttered and classic, but then having the high impact be huge eight foot by 10 foot beauty images. Mm -hmm. That, and we so, use a, we Tessa, use a this, I'm sorry, real quick, I just wanna make sure it's wrapping in my brain. So yeah. is this is this part of the communication on the shelves or is this another point? No, sorry, no, no, this is point is, three. I point just wanted to make sure I was in there. So what do you call point three? Because this is a, this is a really good tip. Point three is big beauty images. Big beauty images. Okay, I love this. Keep going because this was one of my favorite tips when we were talking about this in advance. Like what? So when somebody walks into a salon, they should be hit with a gorgeous fashion image that features beautiful hair. That can be a man beautiful or a woman. woman. Beautiful woman. But it has to be something that... And that, and Redken or Kerastase, all of the different brands generally will provide you Still with those images, images yeah. if you want. But we use Shutterstock a huge amount because then you're able to find things that really fit your brand yeah. feeling. And so, we use a company called Show Offs that where you can get a big metal trap. Um, it's mounted to the wall. That you mount to the wall. 
Yeah. And that costs about $300. And then to get an 8 foot by 10 foot fabric image is between three and $400. Mm -hmm. So up front, you're talking about a six to $700 investment, but it's only three or $400 to change that out every six months. And they're reusable. So yeah. you can begin to build up a photo library. Nice. And so what we insist upon is that whoever we do renovations with, you change those huge graphics every six months. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. You can't run a beauty image. You're not going to leave it up for like five years. I mean, that's just not no, exactly right. No, we see so. that. But you're we in fashion. Yeah. We, we go into salons that are very upscale salons, and they're using images from the 1990s. That, that all, I'll tell you, the number one thing that makes me understand how old the salon is is the images that they use. I mean, and again, to your point, you said how often should you be changing those images? That cycling yep. Six, six months. months. Six, six months. months. So you guys do me a favor. Type six months in there. I don't want anybody else breaking that rule. Uh, I want you guys to get it. And again, I love the idea of using these big beauty images. $50 a month. $50 a month out of yeah. And at the end of the six months, you got your $300. You could put a new image up. Right. And so we'll say, like, a, a, get a huge image in order to anchor the space. Not a lot of posted little yeah. thing. Dinky, dinky, dinky. We would much rather yeah, like a big huge statement. edge than lots of little ones. Correct. Yeah, I, I love it, and I really love that idea um, of being able to use those. So cool. I love the big beauty images. What is number four, Tess, on the amazing list of the deuce? This is really good. And by the way, you guys are loving Tess's list. I love Tess. I want to know. We're going to have a showdown between Peter and Tess, see who they like more. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what, what are the four? What's number four? We're uh, back to – so when we started this, we were talking about setting up how you set up your retail before reception. And so there are things in terms of just how you simply set things up. Mm -hmm. And a really important thing is a lot of people hide their color storage in a, in a dirty dispensary area behind closed doors because they say, it's disgusting, my colors are messy, the tubes are ugly. But what we really believe in is opening up the color lab and doing a big open public color lab with... Um, you know, the sink can be right in it, but what we always try to explain to um, to salon owners is that it's a lot like like kitchens and restaurants, that if it's behind closed doors, you generally don't want to see what's back there, whether you're invited back there or not, but that there are a lot of restaurants that have begun doing open kitchens. It's like a sushi bar. Yeah, and it's it very, and you can tell, it's amazing, and, it, and, it, and yeah. it's part of like them being immaculate is, is part of their execution, right? And it becomes a form of entertainment, and it allows the guests to appreciate the work that's going in, so and when you go to a sushi bar, and you sit there, you feel dumb when you order the chicken teriyaki, because everybody else is lined up, and they're so ordering. So good, that is a hot tip, you guys, that is a big and one. And so when we open up color labs, and have people mixing color right in front of their guests, and everybody else is interacting, and that becomes the hub of the salon, Color sales shoot through the roof. Thirty percent, thirty percent across the board. Easily. Wow, yeah. so I, I love this because again, it really changes that perspective. Perspective, and that's what, again, I, I just love that you guys think about this stuff. It is like it just—it's like you would not order the chicken teriyaki if you're at a sushi bar because you see all that beautiful stuff there, and you're like, I guess, you know. But to that point, is it, it really? It, it um, I love that it's not—it's dirty behind closed doors and it's out in the open. I love that. I just it's, love. I mean, every salon owner. Almost every salon owner we propose it to say, no, I might no, never no I way, no chance. See, they leave everything all over. They leave it all over the place because they're in the back room. Yeah. In the it's back like room, when, you when you have a house guest coming over, and all of a sudden you run home and you clean everything up because you know that they're going to see You throw it. everything into the closet or into you that other room. Into the closet, you close the door. That's what you're doing with the dirty dispensary is you're saying it's okay to be dirty because there's a door out. And you're also educating the guests because they are seeing hundreds of boxes mm -hmm. of color. I love it. They I love it. See that you're mixing they, them and that you're pulling two or three colors to mix. Right. They don't they can see the whole mix. experience. Yeah. What their happening. experience is Clairol, Preference, where it's just a box with a name on it. And they think you're just making Campbell's soup back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I love it. I, I love this. So, guys, we're almost out of time. I want to get this last tip in. Tess, what is point number five for you on this list of do's? So, number four was open up your color lab, but the number five is close up and make your shampoo area private. Mm. Because guests love the shampooing experience. It's always ranked as their number one, the, the pinnacle of their experience. 
And so you should really lean into that and make it as private and luxurious as possible. Mm -hmm. And the mistake that we see people make all the time is we walk in and the shampoo bowls are right out in the open and people's legs are up in the air. And if you see your guests and they cross their ankles and they're holding onto themselves like this and you may look at their faces and they look relaxed, but if they're holding their arms like this and their ankles are crossed, they're not relaxed. Yeah, I love it. If you're able to close, um, put up some accent walls or something, some partition. Yeah, just something to give it some privacy. To give it some privacy so that they're able to completely relax. You can also put spa menus on those walls, those privacy walls, so that they're able to add additional yeah. treatment services, so treatments for the hair, massages, scalp massages, lashes. There's a lot of area of growth and for growth in that part of the salon, but it's only going to work if it becomes a luxurious and private area. So you want to have sort of a little bit of a softer lighting, maybe softer music, and most of all, a sense of privacy. So good, Tess. And you guys, this has been a really incredible you know, opportunity to hang out with you guys. I think every tip, I mean, I feel like we could probably hang out for another hour and you just give me more and more and more value. Um, you know, I, I, just, I, I just have to say, like, thank you. And for all of you guys that are watching with us live, do me a favor and say thank you to Peter and Tess or just say thank you and I'll, I'll pass it along to those guys. But the idea here is that you, you notice that they didn't say go out and buy the most expensive this, the most expensive that. The most. It doesn't have to be that way. You could literally go through your salon right now and figure out how could you modify and maybe even just move things around inside your existing salon to start implementing some of these things that they're talking about. And it would make yeah. such a huge difference. You know, go ahead, Peter. I want to say one thing. <laughs> we travel. We don't charge more than local designers, 10% of the budget. I love it. I and love if you it. are going to renovate and you do want to do it big time, we're there. And if you're not, we do consultation. We go to millardcollection.com. I love it. And we have a line of furniture which test design, and which is cool. neat and elegant. And it's available across the board on all L'Oreal PPD brands through the loyalty program. Nice. So yeah. And, and he. Of anybody. And so, it's not that big clunky furniture designed by men. <laughs> in the, I think wood. I love it. And by the way, you guys, you know, I, I just I just have to say, you know, Peter and Tess, you guys would be like if, if I if somebody says I want Peter and Tess to do a consultation with me, can they they can do that for, for no charge with you guys? Like their first consultation? Points and pay for it by points. We do phone consultations for five for well, we're not going to be quoting prices. Yeah, yeah that's, fine, that's fine. No, don't quote me we prices. Have we have lots of affordable different options. We can okay, okay. So the, re the reason why... I can fly to you. Okay, so guys, here's the thing. If you want to get connected with Peter and Tess and you want them to give you a consult on your salon, do me a favor. Comment in the comment section. Say consult. Uh, but again, we've kind of gotten like a free consult out of them. So you guys, I'm, I'm so grateful for you guys giving kind of the world a consultation today with what, what they, things they might be doing wrong. But there's probably another list of a dozen things that people are screwing up. There's another list of a dozen do's they should be doing. And you'll probably notice that Peter and Tess just have a really amazing eye for what they believe to be true. You don't have to agree with it, but I happen to know that their salons look incredible as I showed you guys uh, earlier. So Peter and Tess, you guys, it's been amazing. Where can people go to find you online? That You said, uh, you said Millard. Uh, what, what was, is it millard-design.com? They can get you that way, yeah? Yes, or millardcollectionnyc.com. Perfect, or millardcollectionnyc.com. Somebody can type that into the chat for me. That would be incredible. You guys, it's been super fun. I knew that you guys were going to be entertaining. And if you've been entertained by this watching, you guys do me a favor and comment below and say, entertain. I feel like in, in, uh, in the 300 when they say, are you not entertained? Is that for, that's the intro video, right? Yeah, that's the intro it's video. Doctors. That's it. <laughs> Lessons with legends. Uh, that's it. I, you guys are legendary. And I, I'm so grateful that you guys are normal people with extraordinary eyes and extraordinary abilities. And I, I know you guys are very humble in what you do, but I think you've, you've changed the lives of so many salon owners I want to. I was gonna wrap. I have one more question. I'm gonna do it. If, as you guys design salons and as you do all these things, what's the one thing you hope you leave behind for people, whether you work with them for five minutes, five years, or fifty years? What's the one thing that you hope that they leave with? I know it's an ambush question. Um, what, what do you hope? I hope that people, everybody, can understand that everybody is scared before a renovation. And that that's okay, 
And I know someone once told me that the only things worth doing in life are things that scare you. And that if you're not scared, then you're not, I love you're it. not really living. That's and, test, Peter. That's her right there in a nutshell, right? That's it. And it's, I think, pushing yeah, you. I think, you know, take that leap and you can do it. And we can, you can do it at your own pace and you can do it in phases and you can do it within your own budget. But whatever it is, understand that the fear is normal, but that you should still take that leap. A bucket it. of white paint and a paintbrush doesn't cost anything. Yeah, yeah it's super cheap. I mean, for crying out loud. So you so guys, the word I would leave them with is when they, confidence. Mm -hmm. When they walk into a beautiful salon that's white and bright and well lit with gorgeous beauty images and not artwork that comes from nowhere. I mean, there was a woman in Montana who had pictures of mountains. It was like, what? <laughs> so they're in Montana. They yeah. know where they are. You see it outside, yeah. So, I love it. I love it. So okay. having to feel confident. You guys, it's been Our a pleasure. People. We're sorry we all did. No, no, you're good. So you guys, thank you so much for being on. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor. Share it, like it, comment it. Find us on YouTube, Facebook, all these things. Find Peter and Tess. Stock them as well. It's just been an awesome treat to have you guys on. You guys, thank you so much. Yeah. And for those of you guys watching, thank you for being here. Until then, until next Lessons with Legends, have an amazing week. See you guys. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. Bye.